going on, everybody? It is your boy, Charlie, here, and I am back for another episode of The Two Count. I am flying solo tonight. It is just me. There is no other voice going with me. No Dave. Sorry, Dave. Dave's probably sleeping, if I had to guess, or fighting with Tama Tonga somewhere. If you guys didn't see that, absolutely hilarious. Dave had a war with Tama Tonga last night. You and I know, you guys know if you followed the channel, I'm a Tama supporter. Dave thinks that he doesn't do shit and is just like a lackey of the Bullet Club. Totally disagree. But anyway, Dave's been attacking Tama. Tama went at him last night. Really fun. Go over to Dave's twi Twitter. Look for Tingo. Um, I, or a comment that I posted it on from Elite and NYC. And you will see this conversation. It's pretty funny. Dave went out a lot of people last night. So that being said, Tama is not the point of this video. The conversation that I want to have with you guys tonight is about the women's division and three particular female athletes that I think are really setting the tone for the future of the women's division in WWE. And it's fitting that I'm wearing with my t-shirt of the day, uh, the Nature Boy, um, because one of them is Charlotte Flair. So I've watched SmackDown tonight and I love Charlotte Flair's new persona. But the great thing about it is that she didn't go full on heel. She went badass. It's almost as if she's stepping into Becky's character while Becky's away. And what they're doing is they're generating interest for Charlotte Flair by using Becky's persona, which is a brilliant, uh, it's a brilliant move. And honestly, it's getting me interested in Charlotte again, who I was very bored with Charlotte because I don't think she's a natural face. I think the other thing that I really love about it is it shows that WWE is starting to move towards a tweener model. You know, it's always been face or heel, face or heel, right? So, so in looking at a face or heel perspective, you're going to have one of two things. You're going to have a cowardly heel that run away, runs away. Look at what they're doing with Dean Ambrose right now. Or you're going to have a face that's always standing up for what they believe in and trying to attack the cowardly heel. That story gets old very, very quickly. And one of the reasons that Stone Cold Steve Austin was so successful back in the day is because Stone Cold literally was a tweener that became so popular by not being uh, subscribed to one channel. It's kind of what people wanted from Roman Reigns a little bit. They wanted him to be a badass that they could cheer for. So the morally gray area of society will bleed into wrestling when you take someone that's a tweener because no one is 100% good and no one's 100% bad. And fans are going to cheer for who they want to cheer for. So I love that Charlotte has moved into that middle ground and the ass kicking that she has laid on Ronda Rousey at Survivor Series was absolutely incredible. But I think what's important to note is that they're continuing the story. So normally something happens in Survivor Series, it gets you know left out. You know they talk about the overall pay per view, but not individual matches. I mean, look at Bryan versus Lesnar. It was barely mentioned on SmackDown, and it was barely mentioned on Raw, right? But the one thing that they're focusing on is Charlotte versus Charlotte, Becky, and Ronda. And the reason being is a, I think they're leading towards a main event with the three of them, and uh, b, I think that you're getting your four horsemen women match, right? So if you watched NXT TakeOver, you saw that Jas Jasmine Duke, I probably said that wrong, Marina Shafir, are firmly in the corner of Shayna Baszler right now. It's no secret that Shayna Baszler is, being cl is close to being called up to the main roster. I'm kind of under the impression that those three women are going to go up and support Rousey. Now, that would mean a heel turn for Rousey, but that also plays into where Becky and Charlotte are. Charlotte and Becky are tweeners that are cheered, so they're the faces. Rhonda is getting booed, so she's the heel. So if you bring up Marina and Jessamine and, um, and Shayna, they can easily fit into the corner of Rhonda, and then, whoa, what do you have? You have Sasha and Bailey on Raw as a team that are both faces, and then you have the two badasses on SmackDown that are sort of both faces. So you are really leading nicely to a horsewomen versus horsewomen um, battle. I don't know where that battle would be. I thought Survivor Series, maybe doing a four on four instead of a five on five was the perfect place for that. Um, maybe that's the WrestleMania main event. Maybe it main, main events Royal Rumble. I don't know when it's gonna happen. I don't know where it's gonna happen, but I can't help but feel 
that all of this is to build towards the four horsewomen versus the four horsewomen. And that is going to be one hell of an incredible match. So the, the first thing I want to talk about here is first Ronda Rousey. So Ronda gets a lot of shit, but I have to be honest with you guys. I don't think it's deserved. For someone who has been in wrestling for such a short period of time, she has done a very admirable job in the ring. She sells. She, she's got her own, you know, five moves of doom, her own move set that she's built out that looks very believable, very real. Her promo rope work has been really good. I think people are booing Ronda Rousey for the sake of booing Ronda Rousey, and we really have to get out of that habit. It, you, know, you know, it's, look, Roman got sick and all of a sudden everybody loves Roman. Don't boo Ronda just because she's being pushed because WWE paid a boatload for her. Remember, this is the woman that really did start a woman's evolution in professional combat sports. You have to realize that her coming into the WWE lended credibility to the WWE's women division. Yes, I get it. Sasha, Bailey, Becky, Charlotte are the ones that did it in WWE and should get preferential treatment, but they're doing it. Look, Charlotte beat the shit out of Ronda. Becky beat the shit out of Ronda. Bailey and Sasha kind of simmering into the background somewhere on Raw, but I'm hoping that changes. Um, so I, I first just want to say, guys, give Ronda a break, man. She's doing really well for someone who just took to wrestling. And I know one thing as a fan that I always like and admire is when a wrestler themselves loves professional wrestling. And Ronda loves wrestling. Look, she had no reason to come to WWE. Yes, they're giving her a big paycheck. But she could have done endorsements. She could have been an influencer. She didn't have to do combat sports anymore to make money. She came to WWE because she loves it. So I really beg you um, or implore you to just take her work at face value and don't say, well, they're pushing her to the moon. I hate her because it literally makes no sense. Your argument seems invalid and it's just, it, it's not a good look for you. I mean, I'm sorry. It's really not. I think you should really give Ronda a much better chance than you do right now. Now, moving to the four horsewomen of WWE, you've got Becky, Charlotte, Bailey, Sasha. Bailey and Sasha are similar. What I do like is that you'll have these four women on two shows and it, maybe the uh, Baszler crew will come up to SmackDown and attack Becky and Charlotte and maybe Ronda can lay out an attack on Raw or maybe they can separate them two and two. But there's going to be some cross show stuff going on here, which is something that I've been looking for. Look, they don't have to break it into two separate shows. But just because someone's on SmackDown doesn't mean that there can't be a smaller invasion going on against a particular wrestler. And that's one thing I like with, that they're doing with the promos. Ronda cut a promo on Charlotte, even though she's on SmackDown. Charlotte cut a promo on Ronda, even though she's on Raw. They're setting the tone to be able to have a war between the brands as time progresses. So I think you're gonna have an amazing couple of weeks, couple of months, you know, year, whatever it is, in the build-up to this overall horsewomen versus horsewomen feud. Look, I'm gonna be honest again. Women are leading WWE right now. Becky Lynch is the hottest thing in WWE. You can't tell me anything different. She is the female Stone Cold Stone Dust, and I ordered a shirt, I can't wait for it to come. She's got, uh, it just hurt the blood on her face. Um, thank you to my boy Rich, who pointed that out to me. Rich, we miss you, man. Come back on, um, join us. But end of the day, Becky is leading WWE. She's the most popular talent. There's no denying it. She's the Daniel Bryan. She's the Steve Austin. She's the one that's drawing people in. On the flip side of that, you've got Charlotte, who they've now reinvented, and she's got the same appeal that Becky does. Um, and then you've got Bailey and Sasha, who everyone wants to get a chance, give a chance. We have Asuka, who the crowd is ridiculously hot for, and I honestly think will eventually take the title off of Becky and reclaim some of the glory she had in NXT. So. The women's division's on fire, man, and I think that's going to be the most interesting part about WWE over the next couple months. Um, again, give Ronda a chance. I'm dying to see where this story goes, um, because to me, WWE at this point, I'm not, I'm not 10 years old. You know, I know what it is, um, and I am all about the story, and this has the potential to be a great one. So, guys, let me know what you think about Becky, Charlotte, Ronda, the whole four horsewomen, the whole division of WWE. Um, let me know what you guys think in the conversation in the comments below. I'd love to have a direct conversation with you. I'm happy to chime in on any thoughts you guys have. Um, and with that, um, please like the channel, subscribe to the channel, turn your notifications on. 
We're going to be bringing you a lot of content over the next couple months. Um, we're really just building this thing out. We're a couple fans that really um, want to just have conversations with the entire community as a whole. So with that, I bid you guys adieu. Y'all have a great night. Until next time.